This video is about me giving my point of view on work-life balance. But before we get right into it, I want to quickly say that work-life balance in itself is not balance, right? So that word is a myth. That word balance, you know, in the context of work and life is a myth. Hey everyone, my name is Adora Mwudo and if you're new here, we talk about how to build your life, how to build your career and how to get the life that you want as a student or a professional growing, okay? If you're a returning subscriber, you're welcome back to this channel. Over the years, I'm someone that has been able to figure out my work alongside a bunch of other things that I do. I'm a senior software engineer. I am an author. I have written three books now. I am a speaker. The last time I counted it, I had spoken at over 150 conferences, physical and virtual, obviously, since 2018 when I started public speaking. I am someone that has a non-profit and in my non-profit, I have a team of about 24 people that I manage and a lot of things, right? So I've had to figure out a way to exist <laughs> through these different parts. And there are other things as well that I didn't mention because, you know, there are tiny pockets of things here and there, they're, they're small, right? But there are things nonetheless. And this video is going to be about me sharing what I have told myself and what I have done over the years as I have, you know, tried to grow and make sense of what, you know, ever, whatever this is. The first thing, and which is what I said, you know, a couple of seconds ago, is that work-life balance in itself is a myth, right? You don't have balance. It's never 50-50. So please be compassionate with yourself. You don't have a bunch of things figuring out. You will learn as you grow. So it's important to be compassionate with yourself. Cut yourself some slack when you don't think you can handle some things. If you feel like you are getting burnt out, take a step back. It's not by force and you will figure it out and you will come back eventually and you go because you don't want to try so hard and kill yourself in the process because I promise you the work and the life you are trying to balance, right? The world will move on if anything happens to you. People will mourn you. Yes, they will feel your absence, but they will move on. They might move on and they can be, they might be incomplete, you know, depending on how important you were in their lives. But the truth is they will move on, right? And death is too tragic for you to kill yourself because of like, you know, hypertension or, you know, being so, overworking yourself and things like that like there are lots of things happening there are many other ways people die nowadays which is tragic the point i'm trying to make is preserve yourself life is shorter than you think it is so don't don't go and overdo right be compassionate with yourself stay sane stay happy stay healthy right you can always learn and grow as you go but don't put yourself under immense pressure. It is never worth it, I promise you. The next thing I wanna say is that you should say no. And I say this a lot. Any, can you, no. Can you please, no. Do you want to, no. Do you have time for, no. Can you come and speak at, no. Prioritize. If you are going to be on holiday, my holiday is my holiday. I'm working, I'm working. I'm scheduling time for all these other engagements, whether it is speaking, whether it is writing, whether it is Twitter space, I'm scheduling time for it, right? If it doesn't fit into this time that I've set and it is not very important that I have to move things around to accommodate it, it's either going to have to wait or it's going to go to someone else. You can't do everything. Do you understand? You can't do everything because if anything happens to you, it's on you. Right, so you want to say no because sometimes saying no is can even be a blessing to somebody else because the fact that you said no gave somebody else that opportunity that you would have taken. And sometimes you might not need that opportunity because you have a lot of things going on for you anyway. Saying no could also be a blessing to you because you get some time back that you can use to do something else that is maybe more important, or you can even just use to sleep. Sleep is also very important, you know, as 
the closer we get to 30, the more we realize. <laughs> The more we realized that all the times my mother told me to sleep when I was eight, I wish I answered that because she would tell me to go and sleep in the afternoon and I'll be throwing tantrums all over the place. Now I'm begging people that I want to sleep by two and they're telling me, come and open this pair. I'm like, I don't understand. This is why you're stressing me. So, so, you know, say no and try and use that time that you get back for other stuff it could be rest it could be other important stuff or it could be that same thing later in the future when you are more stable to handle it okay prioritize self-care whatever it is self-care means to you if self-care means listening to inspiring music drinking wine you scented candles if self-care means netflix and chill if self-care i don't mean netflix and chill the other type of chill i mean netflix and popcorn please if self-care <laughs> oh my god um if, if self-care means um watching series you know or video calling your best buds or staying in a bathtub with you no know, lavender candles all of that stuff or, a, or swimming or a hot shower or a cold shower or you know doing like you know your face and all these things see prioritize that self-care be alive give yourself like she gets like i don't know if you understand what i'm trying to say but prioritize self-care because it's important for you to always be in a good mental state and caring for yourself you know is even goes beyond these things prioritizing self-care means that you know if it is not crunch time at the office if we're not trying to ship a very important product by five o'clock my computer is closed that's also self-care prioritizing self-care means social and media detox once in a while because everything happening on social media is toxic that's also self-care because it helps your mind anything that helps your mind anything that detoxes your mind anything that helps you stay sane that you can put on that self-care prioritize that for yourself in this your journey of navigating through work and life because i wouldn't call it work-life balance i would call it you navigating through work and life and you know in doing that you have to prioritize self-care you should also practice time management. Use your calendar for things. Block out times for certain things that you need to get done. Like block out, you know, time in your calendar where anything can go in there. It's, you know, pretty miscellaneous if you can call it that. You know, like block out times for different things. Focus time when you want to focus on work. Time when you want to pray. Time that you have open that people want to book meetings with you they can go ahead and book you know during that time time that you want to study if you're a student time that you want to apply for jobs if that's one thing that you are currently optimizing for at the moment time that you want to sit down and shoot content like i am doing right now but prioritize that time and you know put it on your calendar just so that you even putting stuff on your calendar helps you audit how much time you're spending on things just in case you want to take a look back you don't want to be sitting and thinking how have I been spending my time? What have I been doing? How come I, ha I don't have so much results, but I always feel tired. I'm always doing a lot of things. It feels like I'm busy doing nothing. You know, once you have it somewhere audited for, you can like sort of tell what you used your time for and stuff like that, right? Create a dedicated workspace, you know. So if you are working from home, I mean, I'm still guilty of this. So this is me talking to myself. If you work from home and your laptop is where you sleep, <laughs> are you working from home? Or are you sleeping from work? Abi, are you sleeping at work? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You have to create a dedicated workspace. And the funny thing is I actually do have a dedicated workspace, which is my living room. The problem is now I, I sleep in my living room <laughs> because the couch is, the couch is so comfortable, right? So now it's like my computer is also here. My, my bed technically is also here. So it's like, okay, whatever, you know, but I need to actively, you know, this year go back to sleeping in my bed, my actual bed um, so that I can context switch between work and rest. Um, and that's why you should create a dedicated space for work so that you can context switch between like work and the rest of your life whether rest whether entertainment whether going out whether being a creator whatever it is you are able to context switch it's very important that you do that you should also get some hobbies 
you know it's very important to do some other things outside of work you know learn to ride a bike take dance classes learn to play piano even if it's just to watch series you know or start reading books you know like start to read things you know like start to do other things that keep your mind active beyond the work that you are doing at your office it helps you find fulfillment outside of whatever your career is it helps you live a fuller life right and it's good it's great it's something i would totally recommend and whatever it is if you're someone that you know likes to if cooking is a hobby for you it's not I don't, it's not a hobby for me but if it's a hobby for you you know um, explore that you know maybe like you know ah, today i'm going to bake banana bread or ah, today i'm going to try and make pancakes you know or if djing is a hobby for you try and you know like mix different things and post them on tiktok if going to swim is a hobby for you go and swim take a walk if you have pets walk your dog you know watch series do different things you know have these other hobbies so that you are creating fulfillment in your life outside of your work outside of your career outside of whatever promotion or whatever manager it's very important because yes everybody came to the world to i believe that everybody came to the world for a purpose and we should all leave the world better than we met it i believe that but at the same time Living the world better than you mess it isn't only in the context of corporate life. There are other things you can do with your time. And exploring other parts of life, living a fuller life, helps you discover these things as you go. The final thing I want to say is that you are not an island and you are also not perfect. So whatever it is that you do, don't do life alone. You know, integrate with a community, check on your friends, build friends. If you are a woman, I keep saying this thing, the sisterhood, like you need to have like female friends on your side that are really amazing because they help you grow if you're a guy i mean i don't know how you people do your own friendships but like find circles that work for you whoever you are whatever you are find your own circle your own community you can't do life on your own right in this journey to balance in this journey of navigating through work and life and figuring stuff out you want to make sure that you also have the right people around you that put a smile on your face that make it worth your while because i promise you there are some days that you know everything just feels like it's scattering and those people are the people that you fall back on there are some days when they will fall back on you as well there are some days when you people will need each other there are some days when you will rejoice together you celebrate together imagine you do all of this work and you even gather all the money who do you want to go on group trips with you know who do you want to spend time with who do you want to when you throw house parties who do you want to invite you know things like that so please make sure that you are not doing life alone okay as usual i would say thank you so much for watching this video to the end if you liked it please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and if you are not subscribed to me please make sure that you subscribe if you learned anything new please leave a comment you know talk about it if there's something about work-life balance that i forgot to say here that you know i'd love to learn from you and i'm sure other people watching this video would love to learn from you as well so please also leave that comment if there's any video that you'd like to see you know videos around building your career building your life building the kind of life that you want being a wholesome person if there's any particular topic you want me to touch on or any suggestions that you have please make sure that you leave a comment and i will get to it i promise thank you again so much for watching this video till the end i hope that this year we prioritize building the life that we want i hope that you are able to navigate through work and life better and i guess until next time see you in my next video bye